Okay, I'm continuing with my series of every exam question that's ever been asked. I'm going to be looking at real life graphs. Now, it is worth noting real life graphs do come up in this section that we have down here at the bottom, which is area and gradient width graphs as well, and they're a little bit more sophisticated. So this isn't the only place that these things get asked. Now, real life graphs, if you do want to use this document, it is fully hyperlinked. So that means that you can click things on a PDF um, and it will take you through to all the different sections. So let's get started with these ones. It says here is a part of a distance time graph for a car's journey. We've got the distance along the side and the time along the bottom. And it says between which two times does the car travel at its greatest speed? Give a reason for your answer. Well, when you have these distance time graphs, how steep the line is, is the thing that tells you how fast that it's moving. So this section is gonna be the fastest because the gradient is the steepest. So the answer for part A, between which two times from zero to 20 seconds, and the reason is because the gradient is the steepest. The gradient is the steepest. And now we're going to have a look at what it says for part B. It says work out this greatest speed. So because the speed is the gradient, we're going to very quickly work out the gradient of this first section that we've got here. Well, if I draw on a triangle to help me see what's going on, if this is 200, this would be 300, and each little bit is 60. So this bit is 360, and along the bottom is 20. So the gradient is going to be the change in the distance divided by the change in time. Distance over time is speed and gradient. And 360 divided by 20 is 36 divided by 2, which is 18. So it's going to be 18 meters per second. The reason it's meters per second is because it's meters per second. So let's double check we've got these right. 0 to 20, and because the gradient is the gre greatest, and we get 18 for that part. OK, it says here, the graph shows the volume of liquid L litres in a container at time t seconds. Find the gradient of this graph. So the best thing to do for these is to kind of draw like a large sort of triangle. So I'm going to draw the base part of the triangle and then the side part over here. We're just going to find out how long each of these parts are. So this part is going from 16 to 4. So 16 minus 4 is 12. And along the bottom, it is 8. So the gradient of this graph is going to be 12 divided by 8. And if you put 12 divided by 8 on your calculator, you'll get 1.5. 12 divided by 8 is 1.5. So that's the gradient for part A. It says, explain what this gradient represents. Well, it's the volume of liquid in a container. So it's this thing divided by this thing. It's how the volume is changing with respect to time. So the gradient represents the rate of increase of the volume. The rate of increase of the volume. Or you could say something like it's the litres per second. So you could say something like it is the litres per second. It says the graph intersects the volume at L equals 4. Explain what this intercept represents. Well, when the time is 0, that's telling us that the volume is 4. So it's really saying like when the um, at time t seconds, when it started, that was the initial volume. So the intercept represents the initial volume meaning the starting volume, the initial volume in the container. The container. OK, let's double check that we've got these right. So we've got 1.5. We've got the um, rate of change of the volume with time. So we've got all of those bits there covered. And then the last part, the number of litres in the container when t equals 0. Well, that's the same thing as saying the initial says, this graph gives information about the volume V litres of petrol in the tank of Jim's car after it has travelled a distance of D kilometres. Find the gradient of the graph. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find out how much it's changed on this side divided by how much it's changed on the bottom. Well, the bottom is really easy. It's clearly 300. The side part, we just want to be careful. That looks like it's 25. So it's 26. That's 27. So the gradient is going to be 27 divided by 300. But remember... It is negative because it is sloping downwards. So I'm going to say either this is 27 or negative 27 that it has gone down. And it's a calculator paper. So I'm going to do my negative 27 over 300 or divided by 300. And we get minus 0.09. So the gradient is minus 0.09. And it says interpret what the gradient of this graph represents. Well, it's telling us about how the liters are changing per kilometer. So the gradient is saying about how many litres are being used per kilometre. It tells us how many 
liters are used per kilometer. And they accept loads of different things for this. So I'll show you a couple of these things. We've got our minus 0 0.09, but they accept things like it's the volume of petrol used each kilometer, the rate of fuel consumption. For every nine liters, you can travel 100 kilometers, all sorts of things. These are some of the things they don't accept. You can't just write kilometers per liter. You can't write volume of petrol used per distance. You do have to make sure that it's one of those acceptable ones that you've got there. And then last of all, we've got like a travel graph for this. So it says that Sam drives his car on a journey. Here is the travel graph for the first 15 minutes of his journey. Work out Sam's speed in kilometers per hour for the first 15 minutes of his journey. Okay, so you could use like the speed distance time kind of formula for this, but I always just think it's better to think kind of like logically about what's going on. So in 15 minutes, he is traveling, clearly 15 minutes, he's traveling 20 kilometers. And remember, speed is just how many kilometers do you do in an hour? So 15 minutes to 60 minutes, we're multiplying it by four. So if I multiply it by that side on four, I get 80 kilometers. So I'm literally going 80 kilometers in one hour. So the speed is 80 kilometers per hour. Now, if you wanted to do it the other way around, we know that when you have your distance speed time, we know that the speed is equal to the distance divided by the time, the distance divided by the time. Now the distance is 20 and the time is 15 minutes. 15 minutes is one quarter of an hour. So you're gonna do 20 divided by a quarter. And I'm gonna show you this will give you the same thing. So if I type this on my calculator, I'll do 20 divided by, inside there, I'm going to do 20 divided by a quarter. I know it looks weird having a fraction in a fraction. We still get the same answer that the speed is 80 kilometers per hour, whichever one you prefer to do. Then it says at 10.15, which is here, Sam stops for 10 minutes and then drives for 20 minutes at a speed of 75 kilometers per hour. On the grid, complete the travel graph for Sam's journey. So he's going to stop for 10 minutes, which means he's going to go from 10.15 to 10.25. And then what we're going to do is the next part where he's doing driving for 20 minutes at a speed of 75 kilometers per hour. Well, I'm going to do kind of the intuitive one and then I'll quickly do the, the formula one. In 20 minutes is 75 kilometers per hour. That means that in 60 minutes, he's going to go 75 kilometers because that's literally the definition. So in 20 minutes, if I do a third of that, he's only going to go... 25 kilometers. So he's going to go an extra 25 kilometers on top of 20, which will mean that in 20 minutes, so that's 10, 20 minutes, so somewhere along this line here, he's going to go up to 45. So 45 is over here. That would be the last part of the journey that's going to happen then. Now, if you wanted to check it the other way around, we could say that the distance he's going to be traveling is the speed times time. The speed is 75 and 20 minutes is a third of an hour and a third of 75 is 25. So either way, we get this 25 kilometers, which is corresponding to the 25 kilometers on that part. So let's double check. We've got this. We've got 80 and it does need to finish off at 10, 45 and 45. So that works. And that's all the questions that have been asked about real life graphs. Like I said at the very beginning, there are loads more that come up in a later section about like areas under graphs and stuff. So don't just stop at this video. Do make sure that you check out that one as well. If you found this useful, please do like the video. Consider subscribing to my channel. I would find that very useful. Thank you very much.